Greetings people, I am Lucifer Seraph. It would appear I need to introduce my small fanbase to the concept of the rhetoric. Rhetoric. Noun. Definition number one. The art of using speech or writing to persuade or influence. Definition number two. A figure of speech in the form of a question or a statement expressed without the expectation of an answer. So, just to clarify, in the last episode when I said this... Okay, we're inside a volcano complete with flamethrowers, vast pits of lava, and wall-mounted fireball launchers. Go ahead and take a wild guess as to which shield I recommend. Answers in the comments. The winner gets mentioned in my next video. The losers get shot for the good of mankind. I never expected anyone to actually take me seriously, let alone answer. And yet you answered anyway. But I am a man of my word and I suppose I can't back out now. So yes, the answer was indeed the flame shield. And I guess I'm now obligated to mention the fine mental skills of... The DBT Gamer and Footloose2005. With a special mention to the imperfect brony for being a smart ass. Keep it up, pal. Anyway, welcome to the Hidden Palace Zone. This level's gimmick? A hiding palace. The clue's in the title. This level exists simply to pad out the story and house the Chaos Emeralds. Yes, this is the area you get sent to when you jump through those large warp rings. Your one and only task here is to beat the snot out of Knuckles and advance to the next level. As such, this is the shortest level of the game. And you have no choice but to head along a linear path, your only obstacles being stairs and wind resistance. Interesting fact, Hidden Palace is also the name of a level in Sonic 2 that was removed due to time constraints. But that's irrelevant right now, so I'll talk about it later. For some reason, this star post always takes me to the slot machine stage. This is the only time I recommend you stay here, at least until you acquire 50 rings. Try to match the character portraits to win. Every black bar gives you two rings. Three Robotniks will steal 100 rings from you, and good luck trying to get a jackpot. Once you're finished here, head to the right and face Knuckles. The Yaredi Sonic. <laughs> Always. Fight! Well, that can't be good. Oh, bollocks, that's not good! Yeah, I didn't think so. Oh, uh, by the way... Epic foreshadowing! You demented backstabbing Lodos prick, you put that back right now! Knuckles, old boy, you really should get your gullibility seen to. Let go of it right now! I say, dear chap, consider yourself redundant. Go, go, Robotnik Taser! Yow, son of a bitch! Uh, see you later, shitlords. You know, you did kind of deserve that. Ow, my head. For fuck's sake, pull yourself together and break this door down, will ya? Now, Roy, stand aside, blow boy. Let the expert handle this. Show off. Must retrieve Master Emerald. Yeah, maybe you should stay here and rest while I go and... Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, naked. Dude, just stay there and rest. I'll go take care of Blubberbutt. Now, why with the invisible walls? Attention, Attention all troops, go, go forth, forth and defend, defend the Death, death egg. egg. Failure will not be tolerated. Okay, who gave that tosser a megaphone? Geronimo! Yes, I'd be more impressed if that was a real pitfall. Come on without me. We need to rest. Okay, see ya. Right, now we've got the acting out of the way. I'd like to bid you all a mile-high welcome to the Sky Sanctuary Zone. This level's gimmick? Collapsing sections and a boss rush. Yes, with the exception of the large yellow sections, almost everything in this stage can, and most likely will, collapse under the weight of a hedgehog. A rather vivid testament to the ineptitude of the ancient Echidna architects. Believe it or not, you don't have to worry too much about pitfalls in this stage. 
Most of this stage takes place in the center of the level map. Falling off just means retracing your steps. As for this level's boss rush gimmick, well... There you are. Dispensing product. Yes, Mecha Sonic appears in the Wrecking Ball boss from Sonic 1's Green Hill Zone. Malfunctioning. And it wasn't a threat back then, either. In all honesty, you shouldn't have any problems with the first boss. Hit the pod, avoid the ball. Even if you've never played Sonic 1, you should be able to learn its rather simple pattern and take it down in a few seconds. With or without Hypersonic. I suppose I should devote a minute to talk about the level's one and only regular enemy. The Egg Robo is considered to be one of the most intelligent robots Dr. Robotnik ever made. And in this game, its intelligence is second only to Mecha Sonic. But since Mecha Sonic tries to attack you using weak machines and outdated tactics, that doesn't say much. You'll find two types of the Egg Robo in this level. The first simply fly in from the background and vanish. The rest float in place and shoot blue lasers at you. Guess which ones you need to worry about. And yes, I am speaking rhetorically. Even though the sections of this level are floating independently of the floating island, and indeed, each other, there are no crushing traps in this level. So you can safely stand between the different sections. And sometimes you may need to wait for the level to orient itself before you can proceed. Could you come over here? Gladly. I need backup. Hooray! I'm dying! Glorious freedom! I'm afraid of heights. Sentry mode activated. You can't aim for shit. Die! Critical error. Mecha Sonic's second form is the Flying Eggman boss from Sonic 2's Metropolis Zone. Again, not a threat. Use a lightning shield to jump on its head, or hypersonic to beat it up. The little ones are easily dispatched, and when it's only got one hit left, it fires lasers from the pod's headlight. And with that out of the way, I'd like to talk about the Hidden Palace Zone. Specifically, the one removed from Sonic 2. Along with Wood Zone, Dust Hill Zone, and Winter Zone, the Hidden Palace was removed to ensure Sonic 2 could be released for the holiday season of 1992. It's not hard to find information on these levels. There's even a ROM hack, containing a playable version of Hidden Palace Act 1. I suppose I'll talk about this in greater detail at a later date, but for now, back to Sky Sanctuary. The small solid white clouds act like weak springboards, propelling Sonic a few feet into the air. You'll find them dotted around the level, and they make convenient markers so you can spot the stage's alternate paths. As for the spinning green discs, try to think of them as giant turntables. Stand on one side, and you'll be spun to the other side. A simple concept, but if you don't know what a turntable is, then you're probably too young to remember this game. So pause this video, go to Wikipedia, and come back when you're more familiar with archaic music players. Anyway, boss number three. If you've played Sonic 2, you'll know how to fight it. If not, then watch carefully. Coming through. Yes, it's exactly the same fight from the end of Sonic 2, except this time you have rings and shields. So all in all, about five times easier. Gotcha. And it still pisses me off! Oh dear. Your predecessor tried the same thing. Guess what I did to him. Illegal operation. <laughs> you could say that. I'm scared. Please stop. You wish. Now die. I'm on fire. Hidden Palace and Sky Sanctuary? Done. Hello? Hello? Yeah, what do you want? Take me with you. <laughs> Fuck you. Thanks anyway. See you later, shitlord. I don't hate you. Okay, okay, let's try to assess the situation. The level is crumbling beneath me. This tower isn't going to last forever. And the death head looks like it's too far away to jump to. Fuck. Fuck. Fuck it. Leap of faith! <laughs> 